What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Danny O Talk Show. Today we got my good bud Caleb here. What's up, Caleb? What's up? Um, so let's get right into this. So, uh, before actually we start, I just want to say my apologies for not uploading. I've been very busy lately for like the past, I don't know, good amount of time. Maybe I think it's been like two months or something crazy like that. So I'm sorry about that. It's on me. But we're back, and we're better than ever. So we're good. So Caleb, if I was a stranger, right? <laughs> never seen me in your life, never don't know anything about me. How would you introduce yourself to me? How would you want people to know? How would you want me to know you if I was a stranger? Well, actually, it's funny. Do we do something like this in English class? We did the thing with the memories, right? Yeah, the th- yeah, we last did. one at the bottom. Yeah, it was like I said that I would be, that I would have a sign hanging around that said, I'm, uh, I'm, oh, Lord. I am that, oh, my God. You're good. <laughs> that it's I am good. a Christian and that I follow Jesus, but right. otherwise, yeah, that would pretty much be so really the probably the biggest thing that would come to mind. Anything like your hobbies, like what would you tell them that you do? Well, typically, you probably find in a non-school environment, you'd probably find me with a camera in hand, right? Which would be pretty clear that yes, I'm a photographer. Yeah. So and then, or at the airport too, and that I love love airplanes. Yeah. So. Now, my point of that question is I'm trying to, like, get to explain you to the viewers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. Because obviously they don't know you, but I'm trying to, like, yeah. let them know who you are. So if you had to tell them anything about you that you would want them to know, what would you tell them? Obviously, you already said you're a photographer. You like planes. What else? I probably – that I have a tendency to seem kind of, lo- like, not paying attention – E.g., you know, kind of staring off into space, but rest assured I am paying attention and hear you. Mm-hmm. That's probably the first thing that comes to mind in terms of, you know, first impressions. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't even know that. So we're all learning new stuff now. <laughs> so let me get right into the first question. And this, this kind of popped in my head, and I think it's a pretty interesting question for you. Hmm. If you had to live by one thing... If you had to live by and stand by this one thing, what would it be? Uh, immediately, the first thing that comes to mind is that Jesus is the king. Right. That's probably the only thing that I would live by, if nothing else. Right. Not Okay. So, like, what do you think, like, what really brought you to, like, believing in him and stuff and um, going to church and all that? Like, what kind of... Well, actually, I've been going to church since I was, like, since I was born because my parents were both raised Christian. Okay. And obviously they wanted to carry that over to their kids, but I really actually became, what's the best word here, entrenched, I wouldn't say entrenched, like deep into the faith, I guess, for lack of a better term, in recently this year in July of 23, Mm -hmm. where I was actually at a church camp with my uncle, who is now an ordained pastor. Gotcha. Yeah, it's actually, he's actually an amazing person, 100%, Mm -hmm. one of the greater people in my life that I've that I've known thus far. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm guessing you obviously go to church, right, and all yeah, that yeah. every Sunday. Yeah, actually, one of my best friends is goes goes to the same church I do, and I'm actually in a few hours you're gonna be going to that church to play volleyball with him and a bunch of other people. Tonight. That's awesome. Oh, oh so you, you like you, yeah. you like volleyball? Oh man, I I love volleyball. I just would not play it as a school sport because I don't like school sports. Yeah. Another thing, I don't even know that. Okay, so. Oh, what was I going to ask you? Um, so, as a Christian, what is your favorite Bible verse? Uh, what, what on is? my Instagram page, in my bio, it says Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, which I'm trying to remember from memory here. I'd probably have to pull it up. But it's like, oh, shoot. I, can, you want, it's fine if I pull it of up. Of course, yeah, oh, of course. Cool. Like, there's that one. It goes... And actually, if um you want to like show how you take pictures, um we can make it pop up right here, oh, maybe yeah, yeah. one or two or three pictures. There, yeah, I'll have to send some over to you later. He takes pictures of like nature and all that. So if you guys, are I'm more than a nature photographer. I'm an anything photographer, pretty anything much. Anything photographer. It's, I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff in my library of trains and planes and everything. Really? Really, the only thing of trains though is stuff from Spain. Mm-hmm. We'll but g- Jeremiah out, twenty. Yeah. I don't know something about. All this kind of stuff with God is just like it feels just cool. Like the verses, dude. It's it's cool. Amazing. Yeah, I bet. Okay, 
on to the next topic. You're a big fan of trains and planes. Not as much trains, trains but, but planes. planes. Yeah, planes, planes, planes. are And a weather, huge right? Thing. And oh weather. Oh my gosh, weather. So I kind of want. Together, I'm ready. <laughs> me and the viewers want to know kind of what brought you into that scene and what really made you want to do that and get like intelligent uh, in that. My dad was a we- a National Weather Service meteorologist for probably 15 years almost, I think. I'm trying to think. I mean. It was, like, really 13 years. It was a long time. Mm-hmm. And for much of my childhood, from up to, like, 10 years old, he was a meteorologist. But at the same time, he also was and still is an officer in the Air Force. Okay. Therefore, he flies a whole lot. And actually, yeah. So, because awesome. of that, and where when we lived in Alaska, we had we lived Alaska's got in Anchorage there's a hu- the one of the world's biggest most important airports in the entire sphere so yeah. to speak right. is located in Anchorage because of its proximity that's not important what is important is that we live right under the approach path to like three different runways there and there was a smaller like seaplane base right located near there that okay. had the you know the big loud little propeller airplanes flying over constantly okay that's and awesome. Supposedly, the story goes that I was quote plastered to the window with <laughs> intrigue, which <laughs> that's funny. Take it at face value, but I don't know if that's true. But it wouldn't be surprising given my stature. Have you flown a f- uh, flown a plane before? Uh, as as the actual pilot in command, yeah. You have? Oh yeah, it was amazing actually. I've it's a whole thing about it, and I've like flown an actual powered airplane with a guy in the right seat, an instructor. Really? Yeah, it was back in summer of 22. Were you guys kicking it off in there when you were flying? Yes. <laughs> you guys were like having a good time? I mean, it was pretty awesome just... I mean, this was actually before the time when I actually committed to the faith, but whatever. That's What really was important was that we were in Hawaii for for a work trip for Dad for the summer. It was pretty awesome, but they surprised me for my birthday with... An hour of flight time in an actual airplane that would get me actual flight time toward my license in That's Hawaii. Awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, it's kind of like you took a giant circle around the western half of the island and flew around the mountains. It was pretty awesome. That is sick. And then f- for a little over a year now, I'm actually going to be terminating it. I was a member of the local gliding club, and at most every Saturday I try and go up to the airfield and fly – with an instructor in the back seat, got some time in the airplane. I'd have to do some math and look in my books, but it was probably close to six or seven, maybe ten hours. The That's point crazy. Is there's a lot. I I spent a lot of time out there and a lot of money, but unfortunately, I had to stop it because of a whole host of reasons that mm. are not necessarily relevant. But the idea is, I love flying. Right, and you guys don't really know like how tall Caleb is, but he is six four. So. Being that tall, was it uncomfortable to be in the plane? Uh, in the little Cessna, uh, it's actually funny. Back when that happened, I was probably not, I was probably s- six inches shorter than I was now, which really? feels wild. That is crazy. But like, it was actually surprisingly comfortable because it was because it's like you got in the Cessna a whole lot of headroom. Mm-hmm. You've be and. So you can see a whole lot. You can raise the seat. You can control the seat in a whole bunch of ways. But it was really, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in it for, you know, a six hour. It's like being in a car for like <laughs> six hours. You don't, you, it's fun for, it's fun for like the first hour. And then after that, it just kind of becomes, oh, now I'm stuck in this position for like six hours. And then you get out of the car and you're cramped. You're yeah. like sore and all these things. That's kind of what it's like in a little airplane, not, you know, a big heavy airliner. Right. Yeah. Um, I was... What was it? I've like had to fly planes and stuff, and like as a well, no, 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 yeah, as a passenger, I've never <laughs> flown a plane. <laughs> um, and I've like always thought like as a pilot, it's crazy. Like you have all these hands in your life. Yeah, actually, I was reading one of my f- mo- one of my favorite pilots. You know the guy who landed the plane on the Hudson River in two thousand. Yeah, what's his name again? Sully. Sully. I watched that movie. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. But <laughs> I digress. I read his memoir actually, and. He makes it abundantly clear that there is kind of a, like, weight on the pilot's shoulders. So, like, you've got 
hundreds of people behind you that are right. all relying on you to make sure they don't, you know, become not alive anymore, right. so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, that's a so lot of it stress is a stress, sure. but at the same time, it's also like an amazing feeling when you actually do it, and then you get those compliments from the passengers, like "Hey, nice landing." Hey, X Y Z, and then you've got those few people in the airplane that might be a huge fan of flying and want to go into the cockpit. And I've actually had a couple experiences where. They have been super enthusiastic. I actually had an experience recently about – or coming home from Spain where I got to go into the cockpit with the pilots before we took off. That's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. They were the most enthusiastic pilots I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Next question. This is a little random, oh but I was kind of just like laying there. I was eating my little bites. I don't know if you like the, the mini muffins. I've heard of them. I was like – it just popped in my head. Out of – Everything, I don't know if you believe in, like, spirit animals or anything, but out of everything, what would your spirit animal be? Like, what would you want to be? Well, honestly, I don't believe. I don't understand the whole idea of spirit animals and zodiac signs and all that jazz. It's yeah, right. all weird to me. But I guess if I had to... think about this i was not i did not think about this i'd probably be uh, like a moose or like some kind of big heavy bird like a hawk yeah i could see that it's even big that. elegant monsters that i love hawks if i had to be a spirit animal i even i came up with this question now i have to think about it too <laughs> um i don't know i really like dogs dogs i feel like that's a common one it is common i'm trying to be unique i would be i don't know i i like black panthers i think they're sick I mean, black panthers are pretty awesome not yeah. like, but actually i was just thinking about it. i realized that i probably want to be an eagle an eagle just name any eagle and i'd probably be like the bald eagle not only because they're glorious animals right but more because they have exceptional vision and also because they're they I strive to be as situationally aware as I can be. That's one of my multiple strive. I guess the word might be like things to strive for. Yeah. Is situational awareness that which the Eagles have. Not the Philadelphia Eagles. No, they're <laughs> a whole thing. But no, yeah, I'm talking I hate about the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. And it's very weird. Oh, boy. And this was from Jane. I don't know why you wanted oh me boy. to say this. But she said, you know Rainy in our English class? Yeah, why? She's got the glasses. She said that she ships you guys together <laughs> as, a, as a couple. Oh, and my And she word. was wondering what your thoughts are on Rainy. I will not disclose that at this time. You could just say she's nice. But I mean, I'm honestly don't really know her at all. So it's kind of like I can't really just say anything because I don't know. It's like me going in. It's like me saying anything about some field I don't know and then just being, you know, yelled at because, oh, you know. Yeah, something's It's like gone. going in without knowing the other side because That's I smart. don't know. So I'm not going to. Yeah, I'll tell you there, Jane, if you're watching this. Um, so this was. I, s I wanted to save some time for this topic because I know you probably have a good amount of stories for this. Oh, boy. But I was, just a little while ago, Caleb went on a trip to Spain oh, yeah. for his Spanish class in school. You yeah. don't got to go through every single detail, but, like, maybe <laughs> so a, there's a brief, whole host of a brief story of what maybe, like, the key points of it were, what you enjoyed, mm -hmm. what you saw. Just the key, just the key points. Not oh yeah, every yeah, detail. yeah. I gotcha. Because it'd be, it'd take way too long to integrate yeah. everything in lot, from that yeah. trip into here. But no, really, I guess the big point was the flights. That was the biggest. I mean, obviously, the biggest part that wasn't Spain itself. Mm -hmm. Like immediately, the trip started off with a metaphorical bang, so to speak. Right. Because you know, the flight was not delayed. The flight was. On time, it landed. Actually, it even landed a little bit early too, because really? yeah, because you're flying eastbound, so you get a little bit of extra wind in your oh. tail. Right. So you get a bit of extra ground speed off it, and so we arrived probably 30 minutes early. 
something. I, wow. I don't remember. Yeah, it minutes? was real in Madrid. It was, yeah. But, yeah, and th- it was actually an amazing flight in itself because it's going to sound wild, I know, but I like turbulence. Like, you know, the bumps. Which might be, which could be a tribute, which could be <laughs> part of why I want to be a hurricane hunter with the Air Force. Is, mm-hmm. So, like, I'm not phased by some turbulence. I'm like, heck, I even enjoyed there. Although, I will say, there was one bump. Actually, it might have been a few. There were there was a f- there were a few bumps going out there. It was like, for reference, it was like two and a half hours of straight turbulence almost immediately after taking off. Really, you're like literally oh, within like five minutes of taking off. Oh yeah, it was like five minutes of with f- very quickly after taking off. I don't remember. Like we flew into the clouds, uh-huh. and then like you know you got the cool lights flashing, doing whatever lights do. Yeah, right, right, right. It's like you could see it flashing on the clouds, and then, bam, the turbulence hits, and it's almost immediately, like, you know, level two out of three turbulence. Oh, so it was pretty rough? It's, it, it was, like, moderate turbulence. It wasn't, you know, severe turbulence where people are getting thrown around the airplane. It was, like, there was this, there, you know the story about the Singapore Airlines airplane that just hit severe turbulence and then had a whole bunch of stuff happen, a whole bunch of people got hurt? Yeah. Yeah, this was not that. This was just, you know, oh, you can't, they had to delay service. Really? It was it was like there was a whole storm system essentially. It wasn't like, you know, a thunderstorm. It was like a convec it was it was a mid latitude cyclone actually was what it was. Which is a glorified term for oh, you just have a system, a weather system moving through that's turbulent. Because I left on March twenty seventh. You remember that the weekend before that we got like a foot and a half of snow? Yeah. That was that same system. We flew through that same system. Really? It was like two and a half hours of bump just bumps all the way until like south almost directly south of greenland it was so bad they delayed service for like an hour and a half mm-hmm. and there was there was like there were a few bumps that shook really like ma- really like woke you up and then there was one bump that like me and my seatmate looked at each other and just kind of laughed in disbelief really oh yeah it was amazing and then it was actually funny one of the girls on my trip it was her first time flying ever <laughs> so i i have a feeling she's not gonna be flying any much anymore was she like nervous or something like scared do you think? well obviously she was already nervous because you know you're flying uh-huh but it's like then suddenly your plane feels like it's about to fall out of the sky and you're like holy mackerel i'm not doing this again uh and while being in spain at any time in spain did you like make any friends or uh well when they were here in the fall i made a whole <laughs> it's gonna sound really funny but Yes, I made a whole bunch of the girls, on, the Spanish girls on the trip. I got the Instagrams of, and I mean, Yo, I'm, te- I'm telling you, he's buddy. got Riz. Nah, man, no, hey, it, it was, was literally just complete, <laughs> 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 just completely platonic. Nah, but in all seriousness, no, it was somehow I don't know what I'm doing, what I did, but in September, but like as soon as we arrived in Oviedo, it was like everyone recognized me instantly. It was, it was like every as soon as everyone saw me, they said. And they said hola Caleb, yeah. in the like Spanish way. So it and was. I, I forgot to awesome. state that before this trip, Caleb hosted some Span some Spanish uh, students from it Spain. Was a single student, but yeah, a the idea single is there. student. So now that he hosted him for a week, he got to go back to Spain, and yeah. live with him for I think it was more than a week though. It was both sides. It was like two weeks roughly. Two weeks. It was like two weeks. So that that's awesome. Of... I'd love to go to Spain for two weeks, but it was actually wild. <laughs> it was like cuz especially where we you had mountains on essentially all sides. It was like mountains to your southeast and west and then you had the ocean about whatever 60 kilometers is to the north. I don't know what that is in miles off the top of my head. So you got some I don't know. It's stuck in my head, but you got some girls' Instagrams. You got to meet some girls. Oh yeah, man! It was. Hey, dab me up for that. Hey. Yeah, that's my boy. G-Y. It was leg- <laughs> It was amazing. I'll that's, say that much. That's awesome, man. I, I mean, it sounds like a great trip so far. So oh, you man. go there, you meet some friends. What are some things you got to see that you don't get to see really in the um, U.S.? Well, in Madrid, the capital city of Spain, they've got some awesome art museums. Really. Yeah, and but besides that, that was cool. They Madrid's a wild city. It's amazing. It's beautiful. But outside of Madrid, besides I guess, besides Madrid, like Oviedo, it's like it's a European city, so it's gonna be really, really old. 
construction buildings and stuff mixed in with the modern and it's mm-hmm. amazing it's like you've got the especially down going toward the center like the city center where the train station is because mm-hmm. that's the thing in europe the cities all revolve around, the city's centers are all the train stations but no that it's like you have a giant walkway down to the center like everything goes to and from the center and marriott actually has a giant hotel right there at the train station it's pretty wild and it's awesome yeah um i don't want to keep tracking back to the girls i know it's weird oh lord or maybe not even it doesn't have to be girls people in general from the people in spain to the people here is there like is there like a difference in the people like, uh, almost, how they yeah, act, yeah, like... a huge, I mean, I guess in the sense of just pure, like, behavior, not necessarily, so to speak, like, I guess if you compare the students in our school to the students out there, mm-hmm. they aren't terribly different, but the biggest difference in terms of school is that the students don't move between classrooms to teachers in do. the same room? Yeah. Stu- whole... Yeah, it's like, you literally, yeah, you don't, you're like in the same classroom with the same students. For like six hours a day for the entire school year, and then the teachers move to you, wow. and then on occasion you'll occasion you'll like move classrooms, mm-hmm. but typically you'll stay in the same same room. How's like the eating and all that there? Is that way better than America? What they get to get? I mean, actually, one of the great foods I had there. It's called cachopo. It's like in this. It's from going from the inside out. It's goat cheese. Goat cheese? It's like, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing out there is food. Actually, it's f- fun fact. Oviedo, a few years ago, was named the, like, gastronomy. I was either the, gast- at least the gastronomy capital of Spain, but it might have been the gastronomy capital of the world, which is funny because their, like, h- highlight food is, like, goat cheese mm-hmm. wrapped in veal, which you know what veal is? It's, like, be It's, like, I actually don't even know. It's, like, a- it's like animal meat, essentially. Was it good? Oh, hold on. You're not even there. I'm not even there yet. It's like, so it's goat cheese wrapped in veal, wrapped in jamón, which is Spanish Mm -hmm. ham. It's essentially like prosciutto. But then you take that, bread it, and then deep fry it. It's literally like amazing. Sounds good. That sounds really good. But it's like you don't gain weight off of it because then you walk 10 miles throughout the day. And it's like, so that's another thing. Is this? It might just be because they're in a city, but they walk everywhere. And there's not many cars. Oh, there's cars everywhere, obviously, because it's a city. But it's like if you live in the city, it's like everything you need is within walking distance. So you just walk between X, Y, Z. That is X, awesome. Y, and furthermore, apparently, I didn't realize this until after I got home and and was just thinking in retrospect. I actually just realized this a few days ago. They hang out with their friends a lot after school. It's like here in America, you know, you'll like come home from school you'll know you'll go jump on the xbox with your friends exactly yeah. no what they do there is they literally go to the friends houses it was like because they live close to each other no it's just more than that's just the thing out there is you not necessarily distance i mean i guess distance helps but like yeah they literally will just like go to their friends houses after school or they'll like go get a big lunch together after school because lunch is the big meal of the day it's like they eat lunch at like two o'clock and then a huge meal and then they eat dinner at like 10 Really? Oh yeah, it was a, it was an adjustment, so to speak. So when when you were the exchange student there, did you hang out with your the hosters' friends too? Did you? Oh yeah, that was a whole thing. I've actually <laughs> it's actually funny to say this. Say uh, we all exchanged Instagrams. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was really cool. Actually, the night before we left to go to Madrid for a couple of days, all of Joel's friends when uh came up to the school to say their goodbyes, which was pretty wholesome yeah i'll say that much was it kind of sad i'll say like in the grand scheme of things like bittersweet because like bitter in the sense you know you're leaving something that's amazing you're leaving a cool group of people but sweet in the sense of not only you're getting (laughs) funny sometimes you're getting closer to home Mm -hmm. in terms of time but you're also going to a new place in madrid which is pretty awesome Throughout your whole life, what is your, like, most, like, amazing memory, you think? Uh, well, besides my like, conversion to Christianity, like, barring that, obviously, that takes the cake, but... Right, yeah. Greatest memory? <sighs> I think we were in class today, and you're like, yeah, I want to talk about, like, this certain thing. Like, it was, like, one of, like, your favorite memories or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was, like... 
is actually probably the night, the flight coming, or, oh my gosh, flight going to Madrid from Kennedy that night was, I've called it one of the greatest nights of my life, because it was just an amazing night, for a whole host of reasons. Yeah, well, why do you, why do you say it no, was? Because I found the turbulence, obviously, very fun, mm-hmm. which sounds kind of, you know, nonsensical, given the general public's look toward turbulence, but also right. the airplane what sounded beautiful i've got videos in my phone say the thing is beautiful it sounds Mm -hmm. so cool and then uh what else the sunrise was magical (laughs) but yeah (laughs) the sunrise was like i had already seen a sunrise from an airplane before because i've done long haul uh, red eyes before yeah i've been on like a red eye once and the sunrise was awesome it's It's magical it's It's like you know what it's gonna look like but then when you see it in real life, even again, after like a second time, it is stunning. It's another reason which I'm still kind of working through. There was my seatmate was, yeah. Th- so she was on a different school trip, obviously. Mm-hmm. So she was on a different school trip. For some reason, she was in New York City for departure to Spain instead of Philadelphia, which was. Her far closer airport, and especially for an American Airlines right. flight too. Philadelphia is a huge American hub, mm-hmm. but for whatever reason, I will never understand why she was in Kennedy. Yeah, but she apparently had never done an actual had a, never actually been on a red eye flight before. So I suddenly got super like excited because I realized, holy moly, I'm gonna get to share the magic of the never ending magic of a red eye with someone who's never done it before. It mm-hmm. was pretty awesome, and yeah, then she, then I, I kind of, <laughs> this might sound a little funny, but I, she seemed really excited about the sunrise. Yeah, I bet. Like, that was what I told her was most stunning about it was the sunrise, so she got really excited about that, but then she kind of dozed off into a slumber, and when the sunrise really started to become, you know, sunrise yeah i was like i i I think i probably slept for like an hour that entire night and it was like not even an hour of sleep good either it was like how long is the flight from here to spain it's like seven hours so you stayed for the full seven you think (sighs) it was like 15 minute increments of sleep yeah I know. so literally i went i went through like it was like a i gotta do the math now it was probably almost a 24-hour travel day because we also had to take a long bus ride up from Madrid to Oviedo, but and I didn't sleep much on that either. It was literally like a 24-hour travel day on one hour of sleep. Really? Wow. And it was taxing, to say the least. <laughs> but no, it, so I digress. So I kind of like nudge her to kind of wake her up, say, look, Claire, it's the sun. Yeah. And then she looks out. She's kind of like in that dazed state yeah, as like, you are. Yeah, she's kind of like, oh, doing. cool. Yeah. And then kind of just goes and she just kind of watches it and kind of is admiring it and then kind of goes back to sleep or something. I don't fully remember. I'm trying to rebuild the yeah, memory right. here. But she like, I think actually she might have, because by that point there was probably maybe an hour, hour and a half left, mm-hmm. maybe two but then she kind of just went back to doing her own thing, and then we eventually came in to land and was the smoothest landing in an in- I've ever had. When you're telling that story about, like, Claire and stuff, obviously it seems like she was, like, special, right? So what happened? So you said she was on a different school trip, right? Yeah. So what happened when you guys landed? <sighs> Again, I'm, I'm trying to remember because, remember, I was on, like, I was – Oh my gosh! It might. Oh lord. Uh, didn't get there until like three o'clock. So it would have been like. It, remember, it was like I had gone twenty five or twenty six hours without. Oh my god! I have to remember now. It had probably been close to thirty hours, maybe even more, since I'd gotten actual sleep. Right. Therefore, I, obviously, it's kind of spotty. Hmm. But then the whole fun thing about flying kind of keeps you awake. But, no, then I remember, like, deboarding the airplane, going through, honestly, the most beautiful, most amazing airport I've ever flown through. It's pr- it's Madrid at Barajas Airport's really amazing. It's super yeah. clean, super big, wide open. 
not li- that Kennedy is not like that, at least not in Terminal 8, but I digress. We cleared customs just fine. It was the most smooth customs ever. That's awesome. Literally just, like, stamped my passport and then let me through. It was, not, it was like, wow. But then we went to the baggage claim, and I look over and wait a sec, and then a bunch of my other people on the trip, like, get my attention and say, hey, look, she's waving at you. And this was a detail I don't think anyone actually n- knew until now, but, like, she was apparently waving at me for s- some weird reason. I don't know. Did you go talk? Did you go to her? No, she was, like, on the other side of the freaking claim area. No. Don't, buddy. Okay. No. Well, don't, mind you, she was also in Philadelphia. What would I have been able to work with from that? I know. That. Like, no, a no, senior no. about I, to graduate from I completely Philadelphia. understand, but, like, it's, like, just, it always feels like that happens in stories where, like, that one person you really get along with, or, like, they want to say one last thing to you, and then you just never know and what they say. And then it's gone, yeah. So, you know what? Yeah. It's all good, though. Yeah. It's about the experience that matters. Yeah. So, that sounds like a great trip all in all. So, yeah, it was pretty awesome. It was actually funny. On You saw the, my Instagram thing. It's The thing said that it was not the photo, it's the memory. And the, the memory was the selfie she and I took before we vacated the airplane. Right. Which, <laughs> there was one regret. She asked if she could have her picture taken on the good camera, she and her friends. And for some stupid reason, my br- in retrospect, stupid. For some reason, my brain decided to to not to deny it. So you said no. So I said no. <sighs> I, I I don't. I think I said no. I'd have to look. I have all the stuff backed up to my computer. Uh-huh. I'd have to look back through the photos. But I literally said no to an opportunity that would have been a huge thing. Yeah. Right. There. It was. There was probably some reason about lighting and stuff there. I don't remember. But whatever it was, I said no. And honestly, I'm, I've got mixed feelings about that. Mm-hmm. Standing. Well, a lot of, like, you kind of act different and, like, when that kind of stuff springs on you. Because I, I know I make stupid decisions oh, yeah, man. when someone does that. But I'm glad you enjoyed your trip, oh, all man. in all. Yeah. Last question to end the day. And I don't, I don't even know if you have secrets but what is your one of your deepest secrets you think that i'm willing to share oh uh, yeah that you're willing to share of course oh man i gotta think i don't i legitimately maybe something you even have, like i don't even know oh man i gotta think Cause i don't keep much in the way of secrets right someone someone asked me to say this so if you don't have one, oh, I yeah, I, oh, I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably the fact that, I mean, honestly, it, I wouldn't, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily a secret to, like, my immediate circle. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my family, my immediate family, my extended family, my relatives, et cetera, and, and my friends. But, like, generally speaking, I want... It's going to sound a little bit of an aggressive move, but I want to drive into a tornado. Mind you, a weak tornado, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. It's Not okay. like, you know, a monster tornado that's going to wipe out a town. No, that would be stupid. That would kill me. Yeah, right. It actually happened in 2013 to a legendary storm chaser. That's not important here. Yeah. What is important is the fact that that is one of the cool, one of the, my, like, bucket list items is to be in a tornado. I just feel that. But, like, not have my house impacted, but, like, be chasing a tornado and go drive into the winds. That would be sick. It's, that, actually, that, it's obviously yeah. safe. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. To- there was actually one of my favorite people on YouTube, period, a few years ago. Gosh, I don't remember. It might have been 2016. He or 2017. He was like chasing a super weak, you know, tornado. It was like he's he like drove into the, he was like intentionally drove into the wind field and he was like, "Oh, we're in a tornado." Ah. <laughs> Tried to make it dramatic and all like, but it's like I mean, that's pretty cool and it's but also at the same time the destructive power that those have is Part of the reason I want to go into it is to understand, but um, but then again, my field isn't necessary. My f- real field isn't necessarily going to be like media or ne- necessarily storms as much as it. I mean, the school I want to go to is big. Their big meteorological thing is storms because they're in Oklahoma. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> so, but given I want to be a hurricane hunter, 
you know, flying to the coast, the Gulf storms, I don't feel like tornadoes are going to be terribly important there. Besides being able to recognize them on radar, like, holy moly, there's a tornado right there. Get out of there. Get yeah, away right. from that. Because there was a story, there was an, a thing a long time ago, probably 20 years ago or something. I'd have to re- research it. But, like, a Hurricane Hunter's aircraft flew into a tornado, like a proper, like, tornado. Like, you don't, you can drive into a tornado. You don't ever want to fly into a tornado. Right. Because their winds are so weird. You literally lose all lift to the airplane. You fall out of the sky. Yeah. So, like, they almost crashed into the ocean. It was apparently a, quote, harrowing experience, so mm-hmm. to speak. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, being able to read a radar and recognize, oh, wait, there could be a tornado in there is, like, probably something that might be worth ha- knowing. Right, of course. Well, that's all I got. This is a great episode. Thank you so much for coming on, Caleb. I hope you guys enjoyed. Caleb, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem, Chief. Um... And yeah, man, subscribe. Let's try to hit, I think I'm close to 600. Let's try to hit 600 subs. I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks, Caleb. No problem.